everyone, this is Gina. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a C-Gem ring that goes really well with the C-Gem bracelet that we made in the previous video. So they're matching pieces. And this little top piece was so perfect for a ring that I thought, well, let's go ahead and make a ring. Now let me take it off and I will show you what it looks like on um, the bead mat here. I made it fit nice and well, so give me a second here. And this is what it looks like. So let me get it close so you can see. You have this really nice little band. That's a little too close. And this is what it looks like. Let me lay it down. Turned out really, really pretty. So let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this ring. And um, we'll get started. Okay, for this project, we will be using one of the beads that was in the strand of the flat and frosted beads that are in your treasure bag, the Deep Sea Jewels treasure bag. However, I do have some of these online in my store, and you can get some if you want some, and you can make this bracelet and this ring I'm going to show you. Or you can use an eight by six rondelle. So this is called an eight by four coin crystal. And like I said, it's listed in my store. Or you can grab an eight by six rondelle and we will only need one. Then we are going to be using some Edo and I have a frosted turquoise Toho. We will be using some 11 O's and 15 O's. These are both also Toho and this one, the 11 O, is the galvanized permanent finish aluminum and then I have the galvanized permanent finish sweet blush for my 15 O. We will also be using a size 12 beading needle and I'm using some six pound fire line. However, you can use some 8 or 10 pound nano fill if you would like. So, we are going to put onto our needle about a wingspan of thread. Probably won't need quite a full wingspan, but on the safe side, go ahead and put a wingspan on. And that's when you put your arms out to your side like the wings and you will measure your thread from your fingertips of your first arm, the length of that first arm, across your chest, the length of your second arm, and to the fingertips on that arm. Go ahead and thread your beading needle and we will get started. Okay, to start this project, we are going to pick up onto our needle the one crystal. So you either have an eight by four coin crystal or you have an eight by six rondelle. Pick it up and then pick up three 11 O seed beads and one 8 O seed bead and three 11 O's. Now, in the bracelet, we did our units just a little bit differently because we had to do multiple units. Because if we are doing a single unit, we're going to do it modified from what we did the bracelet. So you're going to pick up this combination of beads and you're going to bring it down to the end of your thread. Just leave enough of a tail to tie a knot with. And then go back up through just the large crystal. And hold on to your tail, hold on to the crystal, push your needle through, and then just pull your thread until the beads wrap around the crystal just like this. And then you are going to pick up three 11 O seed beads and a 8 O and then three 11 O's. And we are going to go back into the crystal from the side that the tail is coming out of. So this is your working thread. You're going to go into the opposite side, ignoring the tail, and just come through. Pull on the tail and the working thread and tighten the beads around the big bead. Now they're not going to stay. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew back up the 11 O's and 8 O and get to where the tail is and tie a knot. So we're coming out of the big bead, we're going to go up into three 11 O's on one side of the crystal and the 8 O. And then the other three 11 O's behind the 8 O, just like this. Now, 
This is what you should have. You're going to tie a knot with your working thread and your tail. So just cross your working thread over your tail, making a loop, and then bring the tail through that loop twice, tying a surgeon's knot. And then just bring it down to your beads and pull, making sure that the knot lands on the thread and not on top of the beads. Now, you're going to go back through the crystal, just like this, and then we are going to go through the 11 O's and 8 O again. So we're going to go through these three 11 O's here, this 8 O, and the three 11 O's behind it. Well, the angle is such I can't get that third one. Oh, yes, I can. Okay. And I'm going to pull this through. Tighten everything. It's like this. I'm coming out of the 11 O's here. And I'm going to cut this tail down a little bit. And then I'm going to pick up an 8 O seed bead. I'm going from this 11 O to this set of 11 O's. So straight across with an 8 O on my needle. And then I'll just go through those three 11 O's and the 8 O behind them and pull this down and tighten it. Then, oops, sorry about that. I will go through the next three 11 O's And then I will pick up an 8 o. And I will go into the 11 o's. Sorry, I can't hold on to this. I will go into the 11 o's on the other side of the crystal. Now hold your crystal, keep adjusting it so it stays flat. Unless you have a rondelle, then you don't have to worry about it. Then go ahead and go through these three and the 8 o and the next three 11 o's. and 8 and this is what you have now. Now I'm going to burn this tail down just a little bit, just melt it down, and I am going to go from this 8 to the middle 11 -o. So I'm coming out here, I'm going to go in through two 11 -os and just pick up, or just exit that second 11 -o. Then you are going to pick up three of your 15 O seed beads. And you're going to go from this 11 O to the 11 O in the strand on the other side, or in the set of um, 11 O's on the other side of the 8 O. In the same, same direction you're coming out of your 11 O. So I'm coming out here, I'm going to cross over this 8 O and go into the 11 O in the middle of the three 11 O's, right there. And exit that 11 O and pull these three 15 O's down nice and tight. Then I'm going to pick up three more 11 O seed beads and I am going to cross over skipping this 11 O, 8 O, and the first 11 O on the other side of the 8 O. Go into the second 11 O in the set of three 11 O's. <clears throat> and then if it wants to go to the other side just push it over and pull it down. Making sure at this point that you have your flat crystal flat and it's not on its side before you start doing this. Then pick up three 15 O seed beads and go into the next 11 O on the other side of the 8 O. So we're coming out here, we're going to go into this 11 O here. And pull it down. And then we're going to do that one more time. So pick up three more 11 O seed, or excuse me, 15 O seed beads. We're coming out of this 11 O here. We have to go into the opposite side of the one we started in. Get you real close just for a moment. And we are going to go into this. 11 O here.
pull it all nice and tight, cinch everything together. If you need to, you can sew back through the 11 O's and the 15 O's, but it should be fairly tight at this point. Now you're going to flip it over and you're going to pick up four 15 O seed beads onto your needle. And you're coming out of this 11 O and we're coming this direction. So we want to go over the 8 O in the direction that the thread is coming out of the bead and then into the middle bead. Now they're recessed a little bit now and a little bit harder to get. So go towards the back of the bead. You can turn your unit over and look at it and get through it more towards the inside of the bead. Pull these beads down and bring them over the 8 0 and then tighten them just like this. Three more 15 0 seed beads. You're coming out of this 11 0 in this direction. We're going to hop over this 8 0 here and go into the middle. 11 0 and I'm going to show you what I've ta I'm talking about. I'm going to turn it over and then I can go through this 11 0 towards the inside of the bead like this and I can get through it easier. Since it is recessed, that's the easiest way to do it. Then you can just turn your piece back over, straighten out your thread as you pull it down and bring it forward over that 8 0 in the front of your unit here and pull it down just like this. Do that again. Pick up four. Oh, I think I only picked up three on that one. Okay, so I'm going to alter this. I'm going to pick up three on uh, four on that one, three on this one, and then I'll do four on this one and three on that one. You can do all four. It would probably be better, but it looks like it's covering the thread pretty well to me. So on this one, I'm going to pick up four. Since I have four across on this side, I will keep it symmetrical. Then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to go through the middle 11 0 again between the beads. Once I get through, I can turn it back towards me and pull these down. Now, since I did three on this side, I'm going to do three on this side of my 15 O's. So I'm going to pick up three 15 O's and I'm going to go from this 11 I'm coming out of into the opposite side of the one I started in. Let me get you really, really close just so you can see very well. The last one here, I'm going to turn it over, go into that middle bead towards the bottom of the bead on the back of the piece and pull. Then you will have to bring them over the top of that 8 0. Sorry, I'm a little clumsy. Come on, get over the top. There we go and pull them down nice and tight. And that's what the front of your ring will look like. Now, we're coming out of this 11-0 here. We're going to go directly up into the 11-0 that goes into the 8-0 here, just like this. So we've gone into the 11-0 and 8-0. And now we are going to start the outside of our ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up three 11-0 seed beads onto our needle. And we're going to go into the opposite side of the 8-0 that we're coming out of, just like this. And pull this down. Now you're going to sew through all of those beads again. So up through the first one, and we are doing right angle weave, so going through each individual bead as you sew around is always advantageous because it keeps the shape of your unit a little bit better. So I'm going through all three, back into the 8 0, and then I'm going to go up through. Now I'm coming out of the 8 0, I'm going to come up through the 11 0 again on the side, and then up through the top one here. 
Then I'm going to pick up three 11 0 seed beads and I'm going to go into the opposite side of the 11 0 I'm coming out of. Just a basic right angle weave is what we're going to do for our band. Now I can turn it over just so I can see it better and sew back through. So I'm coming out of the 11 0 we're attaching to. I'm going to go into the side 11 0. I'm going to go into the top 11 0 into the side one on this side here and then into the attaching one and then I have to sew back up to the top so that I can make my next unit so I'll go into this side one and then I'll go into the top one right here and again, pick up three 11 -0 seed beads. And this is the, it's just going to be repetitive to this point until we get the length that we want to make the band size that we want. So we're going to pick up three 11 0s, go into the opposite side of the 11 0 you're coming out of, and pull them down. I'm going to turn it back over, and then I'm going to go through the first 11 0 closest to where my thread is coming out into the top, into the other side, right here, back into the bead I'm attaching to. Then I have to sew back up to the top. So I'm going to go here and here. And you're just going to continue doing that making the right angle weave until you have two units longer than the length that you would like to achieve for your band because our next step is going to shrink it in. So let me demonstrate what I mean. I have 16 units. I'm shooting for a size 7 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on my little finger because I have big fingers so this would be an average size for most people. I'm going to bring it around and you can see that it would attach to this 8-0 on the top of my ring on the unit under the last unit. So that means I'm two units long. I'm also going to add a little bit more length by attaching it. So this is going to give us some room to shrink this band down on the second step here. So I'm coming out of the very last 11-0 seed bead on the top of the unit here after securing it. So then I need to attach this to the top of my ring on this 80 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up, I'm going to wrap the band around my finger making sure it does not twist so that I can see that this side of this 110 needs to go into this side of the 80. First you pick up an 11 -0 seed bead onto your needle and then you go into that 80 and just the 80, just like this. Then you can let go of it and pull it through. Now I'm going to hold it over my finger like this and I'm going to pick up another 11 -0 seed bead and go through that top 11 -0 that I'm attaching to right there. I'm going to hold on to it and pull it up just like this and then I'm going to sew through it again to make sure it's secure. It's going to loosen up, that's okay, because after you're finished, you will have it all pulled tight again. Then I'm going to go down into this 11-0 here, and then into the 11-0 I'm attaching to. Then, for my next step, I have to sew back up into this 8 seed bead. So I'm going to go up, down, or up into the 11-0, into this 8-0 here and then into the 11-0 on the side right here. Then I'm going to place a 15-0 seed bead in between each one of these units of right angle weave to cinch it in to complete it and make it a solid band. So I'm going to pick up a 15-0 and I'm going to go from this 11-0 to this 11-0 and pull that 15-0 down between the beads. 
and I'm going to do that the entire length. So I've come out of this unit here. Let me get you even closer. I'm coming out of this unit here. Make sure you get the next side one. They can be a little kind of cluttered up, so make sure you pick up the right one and go into the, to it with the 11 seed bead on your thread and pull the 11 between the beads, or excuse me, a 15 So we're going from this 11 to this 11 placing a 15 seed bead in between. And we're going to do that the entire length of the band. When you get all the way down to the end here, we will be back. Okay, so I have put in my little 15 L between all of the beads all the way to the very last 11 L here. And once you get through that one, then you just slide through the 8 O on the ring, right there on the top of the ring. And then you can just turn it this way and come up through this 11 0 on this side and start again. Pick up a 15 0 and go into the 11 0 next to the one that you're coming out of. Oh, come here. Right there. And continue again all the way around till you get to the end and we will be back and tie it off. Okay, so I have gone all the way around. Let me throw my ring across the room. I have gone all the way around now, and I'm coming out of the last 11 0. At this point, give your thread a nice tug so that you cinch everything in tight, and you should do that before you start the second side, too, to tighten the first. And you can see that it cinched everything up and made a really nice band for me. Let me back off just a little bit here so you can see what this looks like. Now, I'm going to make sure that this is nice and tight. Give it a nice little tug. I'm going to go up through the 8 0 seed bead here. Come here. And once I go through it, I'll tug it again to make sure I have all the tension that I need. And then let's get in really close again. Here, between this 11 0 and 8 0 that you're coming out of, you, or let's go down to the band part. So between this, 8 -0 and this 11 -0. I'm going to go in between the stitch underneath the thread bridge there, make a loop, go through the loop, and draw it down between my beads. I'm going to guide that thread so it goes in the proper place right there. Then I'm just going to sew down, come here, get into this 11 -0 and sew down a few of them here. And so between this 15 0 and this 11 0, or I can actually even go between this 11 0 and this 11 0, see what I can grab. Now I'm going to have to grab on this part here. I'm going to go between the stitch and between the beads and tie another knot. Making sure as I drag this down, I get it between my beads and pull that knot down. Just like that. And then I can go into this 11 0 in the middle here so that I can travel down on the other side. And I'll just travel down a few beads here. You could knot it as many times as you l would like. I'm just going to sew down several beads and cut it off and end it so that my tutorial isn't 900 years long. So I'm just going to cut this off. leaving a tag of thread here, just like this, and I am going to melt that down. Now I can arrange my center stone a little bit and wipe it off from all the oils that I put on my hands to keep them not from blowing away and being dry. So this is what this looks like now. Let me back off. This is really cute. I'm going to see if it fits. And it does. It fits fine. It might even fit this finger. So you can go, because it was a little bit bigger than I was aiming for, so you could just go one unit bigger instead of two of the length you wanted. And that will work fine, too. Just do a little experimenting with it. I'm designing, so um, 
I think that worked out just fine. And that should be, this is, this finger is a size seven, a little over a size seven, so it should work fine. This one is more a size six. But um, it worked out just fine. And then I have the bracelet. Now I just twisted it all up like a dummy. And let me untwist it. Oh, come on. Okay, so this is what this looks like with the bracelet. I think it's really, really, really cute. Just like that. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you make one. And like I said, you don't have to have this bead, though it sits really nice for this type of setting. Uh, Rondell looks really pretty in the setting too. It's a little bit higher up, but it still works really nicely. So you can do this ring regardless if you have these beads or not. If you want some of these beads, I do have some. So I will put a link in the um, description box beneath the video player. And if you liked this tutorial, please give me a like and consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that we can continue making pieces together. I apologize for my voice. It comes and goes as it pleases lately. So hopefully soon it'll stop doing that. Anyway, have a good day. Bye-bye.